All right, guys, we're going to start out this year by um, evaluating some expressions um, and um, doing a couple things with some formulas as well. Okay, um, so starting out, just order of operations. Um, we're just going to evaluate what they give us here and making sure we're following the correct order of operations. Remember, our acronym for that is PEMDAS. All right, and then you always want to evaluate things from left to right when possible. All right, so remember um, what these stand for. P is parentheses. Um, parentheses can be more than just parentheses. Like if you notice in this first problem, we have these uh, brackets. Those are the same thing as parentheses. So we treat them on the same level. All right, it's really any grouping symbol. Some people have changed this to gimdas for grouping symbols. All right, but parentheses, grouping symbols, same thing. Um, e stands for exponents. Um, M and D are kind of on the same level. You can do those um, in either order, but multiplying and dividing just make sure you do all your multiplying and dividing before you do any of your adding and subtracting and it's the same deal here you can subtract before you add those are kind of on the same level um, that's where the left to right kind of comes into play all right so let's start with our parentheses so we want to do anything inside a grouping symbol first so like this eight right here is inside parentheses but we can't really do anything it's just an eight so that doesn't really count as part of our parentheses. But like on this one, there's a two plus one inside the parentheses. That's what they're talking about. We need to do this two plus one before we do any like multiplying by four or exponent of two or any of this other stuff. Okay. Um, some of this stuff we can we can do in a little bit to keep ourselves from having to write like 17 different lines of work. We can kind of. Um, condense what we do a little bit but you just got to make sure you're following this whenever possible okay so I'm gonna keep this bracket here for now um, nothing to do with that seven yet I don't want to subtract the six that would be like jumping all the way to the end um, can't do that we got to start up here okay so leave this as minus um, but I can go ahead and multiply six times eight because there's no parentheses to do nothing inside a parentheses to do here and there's no exponent here so multiplying dividing is the is the next step so I'm gonna go ahead and multiply that out that's a 48 plus alright so here's what I already mentioned we need to do this parentheses first so I'm gonna leave this as a 4 here and then 2 plus 1 I know is 3 and then we've got this exponent and then we've got that bracket and then we've got the minus 5 okay so um, I'm not going to cross off the P yet because we still have all this stuff that's inside this bracket. That, that counts as parentheses. we got to finish all this stuff before we're allowed to do anything with this minus 5. This minus 5 is definitely going to be the very last thing we do in this problem. Okay, so next thing inside here, I can't do adding, subtracting. Again, that's jumping to the end. Um, I don't want to multiply these two, 4 times 3, um, because that would be jumping over this E. E stands for exponents. So I need to do this exponent next. 3 squared. That's 9. All right, so I'm going to start from over here. 7 minus 48 plus 4. 3 squared is 9. Close that. Minus 5. All right, now we are done with exponents. There are no more exponents in this problem, so I'm just going to cross that E off. All right, so M and D. Multiply, divide. Well, I've got one more multiply here. Um, before I can start adding and subtracting. So 4 times 9, that's a 36. All right, and I've got my 7 minus 48 plus 36, and I've got my minus 5 out here. All right, so multiplying and dividing, there's no more of that. So I'm left with adding and subtracting. I still got this P, though. I want to do these first, um, then the minus 5 at the end. Um, once you're down to only adding and subtracting, these grouping symbols really don't mean anything. I could just throw them away. As long as you add and subtract everything right, you're going to be good to go. All right, so 7 minus 48, that's negative 41 plus 36. All right, negative 41 plus 36 is negative 5. All right, and now since there's only one number, those parentheses are not necessary. All right, so I have negative 5 minus 5, which is going to add up to negative 10. That's going to be our final answer there. All right, so see if you can come up with the right answer on this one. Just pause the video, try this next one on your own, and then uh, when you think you've got it, unpause and see if you got it right. 
All right, so first thing we want to do here is the 5 minus 6, so that's negative 1 cubed times 4. Okay, negative 1 cubed is negative 1. It stays negative. Remember a cube power, I'm going to kind of come down here. That's negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. And positive 1 times negative 1 is negative 1. So when you cube it, it stays the same. All right, uh, multiplying that by 4, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. All right, and then we still want to do all the stuff inside this bracket. Remember, that's a parentheses, so it's the same as, this, as a grouping symbol. So I'm going to do 3 minus 6, that's negative 3, plus 8 minus 4. Um, negative 3 plus 5 is, or plus 8 is 5 minus 4. All right, and we saw this 4 out front, minus 8. So I have a 4 there. 5 minus 4 is 1. I'm going to switch them to parentheses. So I have 4 times 1 minus 8. 4 times 1 is 4. Minus 8 is negative 4. All right, you'll notice that I avoided um, using the calculator too much. Um, obviously, that is an option, but it's going to be very beneficial if you are able to do a lot of these calculations in your head. Um, soon, we're going to get to where we're using uh, letters instead of numbers. And when you throw letters in there, the calculator becomes almost useless. Okay, so you got to know this order of operations really well, or you're going to struggle on some stuff that's coming up very soon, all right, and especially on some of the stuff that we do later in the year. Okay, so try to avoid using your calculator as much as possible. All right, if there's some big, like, you have to square 17 or something, um, then obviously that's a time where using your calculator is a good idea, but for these little calculations that are not too hard to do in your head, you want to try to try to save yourself from using the calculator too much. All right, so this we're basically going to do the same thing, except we've got to plug some numbers in first. Okay, so you'll notice uh, Q squared plus 4QR minus R squared. All right, but they want us to plug in a negative 3 for Q and a 7 for R. Or, sorry, a negative 3 for R and a 7 for Q. Okay, so anytime I plug a number in, I'm going to put it in parentheses. So I'm going to do 7 squared plus 4, and then parentheses 7, and then R as well, so parentheses negative 3 minus and then negative 3 squared. All right, um, going to be beneficial if you know your perfect squares, if you can um, be able to do those without having to plug them in the calculator. It might take a little bit of practice, but you can memorize like the first 1 through 20. It's really not that hard. Um, I would definitely suggest knowing those for later on when we get to factoring. It's going to help you out big time and being able to factor a lot better. Okay, um, so 7 squared, that's 49. All right, in, on this term, the one in between the plus and the minus, there are no exponents, and there are nothing to do inside the parentheses. So multiplying is the next step. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply all these. Even though I have this exponent over here, um, this exponent is not affecting anything going on in this term. So 4 times 7, that's 28. And 28 times negative 3 is negative 84. All right, and then minus negative 3 squared. Remember, squaring means you're multiplying that number by itself. So this is negative 3 times negative 3, which equals positive 9. The negative times the negative makes it a positive. Okay, very important. That's why these parentheses are so important. If you do use your calculator, and you try to type in negative 3 squared without the parentheses, it gives you negative 9, which is wrong. Okay, so you have to use parentheses um, to really specify that you're squaring negative 3, not squaring positive 3 and then taking the negative of it. All right, so that ends up being minus 9 because the minus from here stays, but it's not minus negative 9, it's just minus 9 once. All right, so let's finish this up. Um, 49 plus negative 84, that's a hard calculation to do in your head. But look at this. We can do 49 minus 9. That one's pretty easy. 49 minus 9 is just 40 minus 84 plus a negative is the same as a minus. And then 40 minus 84 is a lot easier. Just 80 minus 40 is negative 44. All right, so remember with addition and subtraction, with addition you can uh, just 
flip the numbers around, do them really in any order that you want, as long as you keep the signs in the right spot. All right, let's try another one down here. We've got uh, u is negative two and v is four. So let's plug everything in, four squared minus negative two. Notice the minus from here and the negative from the two. All right, so there's a double negative and I have to use parentheses to really specify, so be careful. All right, this uh, problem came in with its own parentheses, but then I'm gonna put another parentheses for the negative two that I plug in. Okay, it's better to have too many parentheses than too few parentheses. So don't be afraid to, to go crazy with your parentheses. All right, then we've got negative two times four down here. All right, so let's just start on the left, work our way over. We've got some parentheses, we gotta do stuff inside. So four squared, I can go ahead and do that. There's nothing else really going on with that term. Um, minus a negative, I'm gonna go ahead and fix that. That's like negative one times negative two, which is positive two. All right, then inside the parentheses, negative two squared, just like the, this up here, that's negative two times negative two, which is positive four. And minus the four squared is 16. And then on the bottom here, negative two times four is negative eight. All right, so here's where order of operations gets a little tricky. Y'all see 16 plus two. Okay, a lot of you are gonna wanna say, oh, that's 18, which is right. But you're not allowed to do 16 plus two yet. Remember, addition, addition and subtraction are all the way at the end of PEMDAS. Okay, you're skipping multiplying and dividing. Well, what's happening between the two and the parentheses? That's multiplying. So I have to multiply this two by this first, then I'm allowed to add it to 16. Okay, but I don't really wanna multiply the two first because I still have a P parentheses. Four minus 16, that's negative 12. I need to do that first. There's no exponent, so now I can multiply. Two times negative 12 is negative 24. So now I have 16 minus 24 over negative eight. 16 minus 24 is itself negative eight. So I have negative eight over negative eight. The negatives cancel, eight over eight is one. So all that reduces down to one. All right, um, so these problems are the same thing. It takes a geometry formula you're probably familiar with from last year or the year before. And um, you just plug in the numbers and figure out what it is. So this one's asking for the volume of a pyramid, um, where B represents the area of the base and H is the height of the pyramid. All right, and then we want you to know the volume. So uh, volume is one third, B, H. Okay, remember B stands for area of the base. So our base in this problem is a square, it looks like. So area of a square is length times width or side squared. So I'm gonna do volume equals one third times length times width times height. Okay, so let's plug them in. We've got volume equals one third times five times five times six. All right, so let's multiply this all out. Um, five times five, that's 25. One third times six. Multiplying by a third is the same thing as dividing by three. So what would six divided by three be? Two. So volume equals 25 times two, which is 50. Okay, make sure on these real world problems you use your units. So it looks like we're in centimeters in this problem. And then volume is to the third power, so it's centimeters cubed. It's a three dimensional measurement. So volume equals 50 centimeters cubed.